But yeah, um, one of my favorite people to talk to, um, of course, we're here celebrating um, your Florida Book Award, your second one, and um, this one for Blood Sacrifice, which won silver in the popular fiction category. Um, now, your first Florida Book Award, uh, I did some research, was uh, in the general fiction category back in 2009 for Double Exposure. Um, so first off, tell us a little bit about what the Florida Book Awards are. Well, um, they say, is first of all, sponsored by the uh, Florida State University and the Florida Library Association system. Um, and then there's a lot of other co-sponsors. Um, they say that it is the most comprehensive state book award in the country. Um, and, and I, you know, I guess I, uh, I tend to agree, you know, believe them. Um, it's been in existence for about seven years. Um, I'm not sh exactly sure, but I think the, it, to be eligible, you have to be a Florida author, but your book does not have to be a Florida book. It doesn't have to be set in Florida necessarily, but I think the, the author has to spend a certain, num certain number of days or certain amount of time each year in Florida. So, and that's really all I know about it. Okay. Well, now you get to go to the governor's mansion next month. On the March 19th, there's a uh, ceremony for the award winners at the uh, mission in, in Tallahassee. Okay. And then the next day, there's a luncheon at the governor's mansion. When, you know, when Double Exposure won, I went and uh, Charlie Crist was the, was the governor at the time. And he was there. But um, I don't know if it'll just be the first lady or if the, the governor will be there for the, for the luncheon. We'll so see. we'll have to wait and see, and we'll talk about that. But if any of y'all have a message for the governor, you can send it in case I see him, and I could pass it along. Well, um, congratulations again on your Thank you. latest book award. Now, your first John Jordan novel came out 15 years ago, about? 1997. 1997. And, of course, you've written a lot since then, a lot of other books, not just the John Jordan series, but others. Um, but you keep coming back to John, to John Jordan. Why is that? What does he hold for you? I think I'll always come back to John. Um, although I do think the, the series itself is going to have a, uh, a set number of books. I, I don't think it'll go past 10. I'm not sure, but, but I'm also obviously spacing them out because Five books in 15 years is, is not, not really you know, all that many. But what I like to do is go and write other things, do other projects. And then it's like going back and spending time with John. It's like checking in with an old friend, you know, see what he's up to, see you know, how his life is going. And um, I've written six so far. So the, the sixth one, Rivers to Blood, is completed in an early draft state and um, it should come out next year. And then, um, but anyway, to answer your question, I guess it is, I really like John. I like his struggle, I like his, his uh, sensibilities, his, his code and character, and I like spending time with him. And so that for me, that's what it is, it's going back and, and spending time with him. So um, we're here talking about blood sacrifice and um, you got me when you were talking to me before the book came out, and you mentioned the word exorcism. And I thought, wow, this is going to be very interesting. So uh, tell us a little bit about it for those who may not have read it yet. Well, the, the series itself, the, the Blood series, the John Jordan books, are, involve a prison chaplain who's an ex-cop from Atlanta, becomes a prison chaplain in, in North Florida. And as he's doing his chaplaincy thing, he's continually pulled into investigating crime. And... All the first four books um, take place inside this maximum security prison, Potter Correctional Institution, and in the small sort of panhandle towns in this area. In this most recent one, in the fifth, for Blood Sacrifice, because of all the stuff that's been happening in John's life, he, in, in, you know, there's, uh, uh, he's, he's a recovering alcoholic that's, you know, not always recovering, 
and he is in this um, uh, very dark environment, and you know, he, he, there's there's more violence in his life than he would like. And anyway, he leaves that behind to go on retreat, and he goes to this retreat center close to the Gulf of Mexico that specializes in three disciplines, the arts, psychology, and religion. And while he's there, he's undergoing counseling, and he's, you know, just really seeking peace and, and you know, evaluating, you know, what's come before and trying to prepare for what's next in his life. And um, he's awakened in the middle of the night and told that there's this, this murder that's taken place. And as they begin to investigate, they find out that this young woman who was killed was actually undergoing an exorcism while she was, was murdered. And the priest that was doing the exorcism says that the demons killed her. Of course, John doesn't buy that, so then he begins to investigate. Now, you mentioned there the arts, psychology, and religion. Uh, Publishers Weekly said Blood Sacrifice was one of today's more psychologically complex religious detectives um, that John Jordan is. Uh, and I'd say that all of your books have elements of psychology, religion, and philosophy. So where does that come from? You know, they say you should write what you know. Uh, I think far more important than that is write what you're interested in. So clearly these are, these are three subject areas that interest me. And uh, that I, you know, pull back to, and not only interest, but I think because they deal with the fundamentals of life. I mean, if if you want to write serious subjects and and you know delve into what it means to be human and and you know live a uh, live life, I think the arts and religion and psychology are three great places to to explore that. Now, um, there is, as you mentioned, uh, The Exorcism is the big part um, of this book. Uh, as someone who has studied theology, and you were a chaplain for many years um, in the Florida prison system, do you think you ever ran into anyone who was possessed? And as a man of faith and, and theology, do you believe that that is a possibility that someone could be possessed? Well, actually, I brought someone tonight who is possessed. <laughs> and I thought I would just do an exorcism here. For, if, okay. Uh, come on down. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely um, something that, you know, I have studied a lot and thought about. Um, the question is, is there, a, is, there, is there a line where mental illness and things that you can explain crosses into an area that is more spiritual um, and involves things you, you can't explain? Um, I don't have an answer for that. Um, in saying that, I guess that I'm saying I'm not completely close to the idea that unseen forces might have uh, some influence, but to actually be possessed, to actually, um, I think there's so much that's mysterious about this life, and so many things that we're not completely aware of, or, you know, I think we know far less than we think we do, so I think there's this spiritual dimension, and we're, you know, um, and that there is a part of our uh, minds that, you know, f goes far beyond what we are aware of and can process and, and really even think about. And then with our spirit and souls, I just think there, I just, to me, it's a mystery is what I'm trying to say. So you're open to the possibility. And well, in the, in the book, when John starts to investigate, he's not open to the possibility. Right. He absolutely says, you know, um, you know, th this notion of demon possession is, is more superstition than anything else. Um, as he begins to investigate, of course, things happen that, you know, he realizes from the jump as what a bad investigative posture that is to be close to any possibility. You know, he says at one point, you know, I'm open to 
to be a good investigator, you have to be open. You have to, you know, be open to all possibilities. Why would I take one off the table, you know? So that was his, sort of what he came to. Um, I will say this. One of the things that I uncovered in my research, and one of the things that sort of led me to, to write the book, or this subject matter in the book, is the the impact that popular culture has on a subject like exorcism. The number of exorcisms in America increased just quadruple fold after The Exorcist. In the 70s. The book and especially the movie came out. So the movie comes out and then suddenly everybody has a demon and they're you know going to get exorcisms. Um, and I find that very fascinating, that just the idea put out in a work of art causes people to, to suddenly think there's, you know, that several people they know are possessed, so. Interesting. Now, let's talk a little bit about all of your uh, fiction books, if I'm not mistaken, take place here in Northwest Florida, and this is no exception. Um, blood sacrifice takes place uh, in the area west of us. Uh, it's a, um, a paper mill town that is no more. Uh, there's developers um, nipping at the heels of the local government folk to, uh, to, to build resorts and so forth. I say that to say that there's seems to be elements of conservation and protecting the environment in this book as well as in the other books. And if you could just kind of share with us your thoughts about that. The, um, you know, I, earlier I said you write about what you, you know, know or are interested in. The other part of that is write about what you care about. And I really do care about this, this part of the world. Um, and so I can't love it like I do and care about it and want to take care of it and that not come out in the, in the books, you know, in the, um, and the, you know, what you alluded to is this, that I, I, this is a work of fiction, but obviously it's based on Gulf County where the paper mill closed and the St. Joe Company, the largest private landholder in the state, decided they were going to be a um, developer, you know, going to, they were going to change from growing pine trees and turning them into to pulp to, for paper into these mega developments like we see in Central and, and South Florida. Um, so, so some of the issues related to their vision for our part of the world is, is in the book. And um, I have, you know, great concern about some of their vision um, and the way they go about doing things and the way the company has done things for a very long time. Um, so, I, I, again, something I care about and it just, I don't start to, you know, when I start a novel, I don't start to, I don't, I don't have an ax to grind, I don't have, so I'm going to prove this or, I just ex want to explore things. And so these things resurface continually and they, they make their way into the book, but I, I hope that it's in an organic way because that's how it comes to me. It's not like I set out to say, okay, I'm gonna write an environmental book or I'm gonna write an exorcism book. It's just, that's just part of the, the fabric of what I hope is a very rich tapestry of humanity and, and you know, these, these, these issues. As you're talking about ideas you get for these books, and I know it's a compilation of things. It's not just you get something and, you, well, maybe it is like that, but I, we've talked and you said it's a lot of things. But do you remember where you were or what the circumstance was when you got the idea for exorcism to be in this book? <coughs> what led to that? No, I have absolutely no idea. Um, How did that develop? I think the um, I think it came from reading. I think um, the one of the things I referenced was you know the impact of the movie The Exorcist on popular culture. There's a book called American Exorcism, 
And I read that at a certain point and, and you know, talk, it talked about this phenomenon. And, but I don't know if that led directly to it or if, I, I can't remember if maybe I came upon that book after I had the idea. I just, I have no idea. So uh, what's next for John Jordan? Um, I think uh, Rivers to Blood is the next book, and um, I think it is similar to the books that have come before, but a little more of a hybrid because whereas Blood Sacrifice has him completely outside of the prison, no, no relationship to the prison whatsoever, and all the books previously that had him just primarily in the prison, Rivers to Blood is sort of a combination. There's a sort of a dual case going. So he's working on a case that's outside in the community that seems to have nothing to do with the prison. And then there's a case inside the prison. Um, and as you can tell by the title, it is uh, a good bit of it takes place on the Apalachicola River and in the, in the swamps and the, the, this area I keep getting drawn back to. So does John Jordan ever find love? Um, well, I, don't, yeah, I think he's found love. What, what exactly are you asking? Is, does he <laughs> settle down with someone? I, I, think, I think he might. Um, um, I, I think towards the end of Rivers to Blood, there might be those who've been pulling for John in that department might be happy about what's going to happen. John struggles. He's such a good guy. I think he's a good guy. I like him because he's so real. I mean, he's a real person. I think he's a very good I guy. Think, I think he's just, he's, uh, you know, he has struggles that a lot of us can identify with, and it seems like he's always trying to better himself or better the world in some way, and he just keeps chugging along, and but something always gets in his way. Well, you know, Shakespeare said the course of true love never runs, never ran smooth, right? So, but John will get there, I think. So, what's some of your favorite characteristics about John? <clears throat> um, I think you mentioned John is a good person, and that you know, writing about someone who is is good or desires to do good is far more challenging than than you would think. You know, it's it's easier to write about you know, ex extremely troubled people or, or, you know, villains, of course, are fun and, and you know, easy to write about. Um, they say that happiness is nearly impossible to write about, whereas misery is easy to, to write about. But um, he is a good person, I think, and he definitely wants to be, uh, you know, a good man. And I, Raymond Chandler, when he was talking about the sort of uh, hard-boiled detective aesthetic said that he needs to be um, a good man in all worlds and the best man in, in his world. And I, I feel that about John. You know, John, he has his issues, like you said, and he struggles. Um, but he's, he's, you know, in a very difficult situation, job, trying to make a difference. And I think in some small way, making his small corner of the world a, a better place. And uh, so with that, um, I just look forward to reading more John Jordan books. It's my favorite character that, that you do. I like them all, but I, lo I love John Jordan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I and, appreciate uh, that. So I think I told you, it, I think it was in this room, actually. There was a library event about six months ago. I think it was and. It seems like someone came up and said, uh, they had just read, I think, one of the John Jordan books, and, and she said, um, I love Double Exposure, and she mentioned some ones she really liked. And then she said, had I read this one first, I don't think I'd have read anything else you wrote. So it's interesting. Most people do really do like John and, and that series, but uh, I guess it's not for everyone. So we have one more coming out that we know of. At least, At yes, least. yeah. And I, you know what, I've, I've, I've have been lately here um, uh, having some ideas about what's going to happen with John next. So I'm, I'm excited about the possibilities of what's, to what's to come. Do you those ideas? <clears throat> um, no. Please do so anyway, please. <laughs> I will tell you that um, 
you know, Jimmy Riley in my other series, the 1940s Panama City, the brand new book, which comes out in April, I actually have copies here tonight. See how I'm changing the subject? Yes. Um, I see Jimmy, <laughs> I see Jimmy as a, uh, a character not dissimilar to John, but a, a more immature, less evolved, and younger um, character. Uh, but anyway, the, so The Big Beyond is, is out now, and I'm really excited about that. And then, in the fall, um, a book called Separation Anxiety comes out. And Separation Anxiety is the, the best way I can describe it, is the spiritual sequel to both Double Exposure and Burn Offerings. Mm. Really excited about that. 